every story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us on Core TV Primetime News. I'm Nifemi Okuntoye in a major story. President Mohamedou Buhari again urges leaders of the All Progressives Congress to sheath their salt. Also in this program, People's Democratic Party accuses the Director General of the Department of State Security Services, Lawa Dara, of interference in election petition cases. The Nigerian Football Federation unveils a new Super Eagles coach at Sunday Olisa. Outside Nigeria, a Demon court sentences a 94-year-old former Nazi guard, Peter Gronin, to four years imprisonment. Hello again. We'll begin in Abuja, where President Mohamed Bohari has again urged the leaders of the All Progressives Congress to bury the hatchet in the interest of the electorate who opted for change in the 2015 election. This, he says, would enable the party deliver on its campaign promises to Nigerians. President Buhari, who spoke at a dinner to break the Ramadan fast at the presidential villa, also went down memory lane to show how far the party had come. We promise that we will continue to struggle, be with you, be associated support i've seen many faces that have come across various campaigns thank all of you no matter what i say we are not rerunning the election until four years to come we just have to live in nigeria as a Whoever think he voted, and voted ever know, let him use his influence to make sure that uh, he consolidates you know, the coming together of the day. And vote ever know to make sure that uh, we help achieve the city identified many personal you know, speeches that ABC preached throughout the country. Security, economy, employment, and economics, and keeping corruption. Because before I said it, so many people have said that if we don't kill corruption in Nigeria, corruption will kill us. Meanwhile, national leader of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Tinubu, has dismissed claims of a rift with President Mohamedou Buhari. The former Lagos state governor insists that he remains uh, loyal to I the president, no the contrary fact. to suggestions Can of a similar theme between the duo. Tinubu spoke with state house correspondents shortly after leading other party leaders to break the Ramadan fast with President Buhari at the presidential villa. Uh, I have no demand on the party. If you understand what party politics is all about and leadership is all about, it's about loyalty and commitment to the values that leadership believes in. I believe in what president believes 
I respect him and I start family lawyer to his cause. So uh, you can go to any length of speculations that you might want. I have not uh, responded to all of that because I understand the president and the president understands me clearly. The former Commonwealth Secretary General, Ebeka Ayelko, was convinced about President Mohamed Buhari's determination to bring about positive change in the country. He also expressed confidence in the leadership skills, especially in his readiness to stem the tide of corruption. Ayelko told State House correspondents after a meeting with the President at the Presidential Villa in Abuja that he has no doubt in his mind that he would succeed. The held statesman revealed that the visits offered him an opportunity to speak with President Buhari on his impending trip to the United States. I found myself talking with a president who is very determined to effect a real change in the circumstances of our country and very determined to bring to bear on his administration the generally perceived attributes of his character for which I believe that many Nigerians voted for him. Uh, president Muhammadu Buhari, uh, before he became president, was known as somebody who has very strong aversion to corruption and um, uh, I believe that he is determined to fight corruption and that um, um, he will go a long way in doing so. A boy in state, Gabna Dave Mai, we on Wednesday showed up at the presidential villa to discuss the poor condition of federal government rules in the state. He told State House correspondents after his closed door meeting with President Buhari that some of the roads lead to the sites of natural resources that investors have been showing interest in. He also used the opportunity to express support for the president's anti-corruption measures. We have issues in a boy state. We have the solution to the problems of uh, the nation in the area of uh, agriculture, in the area of uh, mineral resources like cement, like lead, zinc, bauxite, copper, and even coal, and very large deposit of salt as well. So. Uh, a lot of investors on hearing uh, the patronage in Mr. President intends to give to local production of these items, you know, besiege the Boeing State. They want to invest in these areas. And we have issues. These sites, the, the routes leading to these sites are federal routes. So they are very difficult to uh, assess, you know, they find it very difficult to assess these sites. And so I came to ask Mr. President for two things. One, uh, some banks are willing to lend money to Bonny State to construct this route, and they want assurance from federal government that when they lend us money to construct this route, the federal government will reimburse them, the funds they will lend to a Bonny State government. The federal government has warned Nigerians to be mindful of the activities of admission racketeers demanding payment before scholarship and admission applications are processed. Permanent Secretary and the Minister of Education, Mark Genoa Biola, gave a warning while briefing journalists in Abuja on recent developments involving the Federal Scholarship Board and admissions into Unity schools and federal universities. According to him, the Frostas are in no way related with the Ministry of the Board, whose official channel of interaction with the public is its website. The Ministry does not, and we want to emphasize it, that the ministry does not charge money to offer admission at any level. If a candidate is not selected on national merit, state voter, or other criteria, there are no agents that will be paid to make the admission possible. We advise the general public and all parents, all stakeholders, all sponsors of the children and Nigerians in general 
to be mindful of admission racketeers. The general public is hereby informed that these front left persons have no relationship with the Federal Ministry of Education and the Federal Scholarship Board and that no money is collected for processing and awarding scholarship for admission into the Unity Colleges or any federal institution. The People's Democratic Party has alleged that the Director of the Department of State Service, Lawa Daura, is interfering with electoral matters currently before some election petition tribunals. The party further alleged that Daura had even invited some security chiefs and some members of election petition tribunals with the aim of interrogating them. National Publicity Secretary of the party, Olisa Meitu, stated this at a press briefing in Abuja on Wednesday. Meitu said members of the National Working Committee arrived at this decision after their meeting in Abuja. Meitu added that his party was not happy with the dissolution of validly elected local government area executives in Plateau and casino states. The two states are being governed by the All Progressives Congress. He said the councils were dissolved by the affected state governments without any court judgment. Meto said in Brevard State, which is being governed by the PDP-led government, and where councils chairman and councillors were also sacked, the action was taken as a result of a court judgment. Seven witnesses lined up by the All Progressives Congress on Thursday told the Aquibum State Governorship Petition Tribunal sitting in Abuja that there was no election in the state. This was after the tribunal turned down a bid by the PDP for the disqualification of the witnesses on the grounds that their statements did not bear their names. In a short ruling, Tribunal Chairman Justice Sadiq Umar upheld the argument of the plaintiff counsel to allow their testimony. He also fixed a July 22 date for the cross-examination of the witnesses. With respect to continuation of hearing, in respect of this petition, um, as a, a result of uh, the progress that we have been be able to make today now, we have called thus far a total of uh, seven witnesses. So the, I can tell you authoritatively that we are making appreciable progress in respect of the petition. The hearing, of course, continues. When? Well, it has been adjourned to 22nd, 22nd of uh, this month for continuation, which is uh, Wednesday next week. Well, what happened in the tribunal is um, fairly straightforward. It was the hearing. Witnesses were examined, cross-examined, um, and when necessary, re-examined. There was little re-examination, but essentially it was a hearing. Uh, what lawyers call trial, having to test the truthfulness, the veracity of the story by the petitioner through his witnesses. In line with its resolve to cut the cost of governors, the Kaduna State Government has announced the retirement of 20 permanent secretaries. This follows the decision to streamline ministries in the state from 19 to 13. As part of efforts to free up resources for schools, hospitals, roads and other public goods. Special Assistant Media and Publicity to the Governor Samuel Aruan said there will be only 13 permanent secretaries for the 13 ministries. He added that five departments will be headed by permanent secretaries. These are the Public Service Office, the Bureau of Establishments, Political and Economic Affairs, Cabinet and Security Services and General Services. And this will bring the total number of permanent secretaries in the civil service to just 18. If you just join us, it's Core TV Primetime News. We'll be back after now with more stories. If you stay with us. Is it what, 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 what crazy? Or talk crazy? Or what type of crazy is that? Except crazy. News making the headlines. Black Maria is to, is to carry criminals. Looters, that are in government today. Sometimes it gets confrontational. Stop you in the face. Excuse me, don't put words into my mouth. Whatever it is, that will bring our ministry to this report. I say to help On me. Cold Digest. I want to know why I should be believing them. Every weekday, we bring all of these together and take them to the court of public opinion. Everybody has the right in Nigeria. Where you 
on the job. Welcome back. And a look now at our top star. President Mohamed Buhari again urges leaders of the All Progressives Congress to shit the sides. People's Democratic Party accuses the Director General of the Department of State Security Services, Lawan Daura, of interference in election petition cases. <laughs> Nigerian Football Federation unveils Sandel Lise as the new Super Eagles coach. You can get all of the top stories on any of our social media platforms. At Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash Core TV News. Our Twitter handle is at Core TV News NG and we're streaming live on YouTube. It's youtube.com forward slash Core TV, love of space and news. Katuna State Government has expressed its readiness to create more jobs by boosting the agriculture sector. Governor Nasir El-Rafai said these are the one-day summit that more attention would be on processing and storage of grains. He also indicated that local farmers would be training in beekeeping and pollination services. We also need to tackle problems of storage, processing, and the poor bargaining power of our farmers at harvest time. Farming remains backbreaking work. We must make it less stressful. And more if the agricultural sector is to realize its potentials as a major driver of growth and job creation. The next challenge is also to encourage and empower women farmers to acquire and adopt modern farming techniques and tools to increase the quality of their products and our food. And now to Quara State, where as part of efforts aimed at saving cost, the state government has now concluded arrangements to streamline and reduce the number of ministries and agencies. This was disclosed by the state governor, Abdul Fattah Ahmed, in an interactive session with civil societies group in the state capital. Our correspondent brings you details of that subsequently. The Kaduna State Security Outfit, codenamed Operation Yaki, said on Wednesday that it has uncovered a plot by a terror group, the Sarasuka, or the Masushara, to attack the state on, Mas on Saladay. The coordinator of Operation Yaki, Yakubus Yusuf, who raised the alarm, said security operatives had been placed on red alert, warning residents of vigilance during the period. He also cautioned residents against accommodating or harboring strange fellows as the Boko Haram terror group had changed its tactics of attacks. Specifically, the coordinator urged parents to guard their children against being ready recruits for the Boko Haram sect. Yusuf, who urged security agencies to change their modes of operation in the current war against terrorism, said places mapped out for possible attacks by the terror groups were worship places, recreation centers, parks, as well as highways. He added that security operatives were being tasked to be more proactive in the areas mapped out by the terror gangs for the attacks. An Inspector General of Police, Solomon Arase, has ordered command commissioners of police across the country to ensure adequate and improved security during and after the Salah celebrations. Police spokesman Emmanuel Ojuku said in a statement that the IGP wants special attention paid to all places of worships, key public places and other vulnerable points prone to criminal attack. He also maintained that the police high command is hopeful that the operational strategies adopted by the force and renewed collaboration with the public will yield positive results. The police have now signed a memorandum of understanding with the German Development Corporation, the GIZ, the deal will, among others, advance the training and skill upgrade of police personnel, support police reforms and build security initiative. It's also meant to strengthen the capacity of the police and other security forces in order to combat Boko Haram incidents. Inspector General Solomon Arase signed on behalf of the Nigeria Police Force, while the country representative of GIZ, Thomas Kirsch, 
signed on behalf of the German agency. The MOU, according to the police authorities, is a fallout of President Mohamed Buhari's visit to Germany a few weeks ago. The Department of State Service by Elsa Command has arrested three pastors and a woman for allegedly trafficking 36 children. The three pastors are said to belong to the Assemblies of God Church and the woman who runs a private school in Yenegua. The four suspects were paraded at the DSS office in Yenegua on Wednesday. The pastors' names were given as Dauda Nurugada, 32, from Kerber State, Anthony Anthony Owebe, uh, 53, from Anambra State, and Reverend Benlami Sagabra, 43, from Kaduna State, as well as Tombra Alaziga, 38, the school proprietress. The 36 children, whose ages range between 5 and 14 years, rescued from homes where they had been used as maids, were brought to the parade. Addressing journalists at the state headquarters of the DSS, the Assistant State Director of Security, Friday Onuche, said the children were rescued from homes in Yunegua and Keima in Bayelsa State, and Nogo Agidi in Anambra State, and Portakot in River State after investigations. The National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, has jammed Radio Biafra so as to stop those behind the station from further broadcasting. The Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Information, Shadi Yemieson, discussed this in Abuja shortly after she briefed President Mohamed Buhari on the state of the ministry. Right now, the signals from Radio Biafra has been jammed successfully by the NBC. The Permanent Secretary said the President expressed concerns about piracy in Nollywood and gave instructions to the ministry to work harder to ensure that the producers of Nollywood films get what was due there and that piracy is reduced to the barest minimum. She said the president has now directed that the image of the country be improved. Operatives of the Economic and Financial Crime Commission have arrested Awan Mohammed Ademo, also known as Mohammed Bala, for parading himself as a staff of the anti graft agency. EFCC said in a statement that Adamo was picked up while extorting money from Alaji Usman Gurama, the Executive Secretary Gumbe State Muslim Pilgrim Welfare Board, under the guise of securing Hajj seats to Saudi Arabia for staff of the Gumbe Zone of the Commission. Investigations by the Commission revealed that the suspect had written a letter to the Executive Secretary of the Pilgrims Board requesting for money to give staff of EFCC for the pilgrimage to Mecca. It added that after these arrests by AFCC operatives, he confessed not being a staff of the commission, and it later turned out that he was an assistant headmaster at a primary school in Gombe State. Gunmen suspected to be assassins on Tuesday night stomped the residence of a lecturer at the Department of Agricultural Economics at the Obafemi Awolowo University in Dr. Deji Adejobi. Reports say that Adejobi was shot by his assailants who invaded his residence close to the target area of Ilefe. Residents of the area said the gunmen who stomped the residence around 10 p.m. shot into the air to scare away residents before firing their target. The deceased was said to be the older brother of the police public relations officer of the Ogun State Police Command, Muiwa Adejobi. Speaking on behalf of the university, the public relations officer, Abiodun Olarewaju, who confirmed the incident, said the university community was shocked to hear the news of the killing of the university down. Well, over 100 students from Ihobe College in Benin City stormed the street in a protest to condemn what they tagged a worsening situation in their school. The angry students called on Governor Adam Sushumale to intervene before the situation degenerates. We'll bring you details of that report later on. Following the spike in the number of deaths recorded from the outbreak of cholera in Plata State and the devastating effect which has now reached an alarming rate, the officials from the state's Ministry of Health have confirmed that over 160 cases of cholera has been recorded. The severity of the situation has now led to the setting up of a committee by the Plata State House of Assembly to find out the remote causes of the epidemic and make recommendations on how to address it. We'll bring you the details in this report. So far, 163 cases of cholera have been reported across Plato State in the month of June, with 10 deaths reported in just alone. The spread of the communicable disease is a source of serious worry to stakeholders in the state. Against this backdrop, 
the Plato State House of Assembly has set up a committee to seek out the cause of the rapid spread of the disease and to suggest ways of achieving a lasting solution to the epidemic. Based on those five meetings, the committee made the following observations. One, that most houses have no toilets, so they began in the bush, in the bushes where, where thereby exposing their feces to flies that could contaminate our food. Two, that their sources of water supply were from the stream. Because of the drought being experienced, water was stagnated, which served as a source of reservoir of protection that their environmental sanitation was poor with no dumping site for refuse, that their waste, um, but that there was poor personal hygiene as people were... The committee has called on spirited individuals to assist in providing financial and material assistance for those still in the hospital so as to reduce the continuous death being recorded. Whatever state, local government council and other spirited individuals should assist the victims presently in the hospital with drugs and also settle the abuse. That sanitary inspectors should be empowered to enforce sanitation laws by finding defaulters and dumping sites be provided by the council. That legal system be put on ground that will make hospitals to report any outbreak immediately. That all houses be made to have toilets and to always engage in cleaning their environment. The committee further suggested that a strict law be put in place to punish those who engage in poor sanitary habits that pose danger to the lives of others. We'll be back after this time out with business, sports and stories outside Nigeria. Join me again. What the people are saying. You don't run a big economy with generator. They need to do more in terms of energy and power. Many things to do for this Nigeria. About lights, water, and new TT. For Nigerians that are not gullible, we know that good laws are done nothing good for this country. We already won the election eh? convincingly. They talk to our husband that you should keep promise oh, about what you said. Oh. Because people are watching you, you know, another election is coming. Because some, some people were strong for for the land. We'll be strong, man. We don't die. This nation is moving forward. The best is going to take place. The people giving voice to the voiceless. Outside Nigeria, a German court has convicted another four-year-old former guard at the Nazi death camp at Auschwitz have been an accessory to the murder of at least 300,000 Jews. Oscar Groning, known as the bookkeeper of the Auschwitz, was sentenced to four years in prison. He was responsible for counting the belongings confiscated from prisoners and had admitted moral guilt. His lawyer said he did not facilitate genocide, but prosecutors argued that he had helped the camp run smoothly. Many observers have questioned whether Gronin will ultimately be sent to jail, given his advanced age. He is expected, however, to be one of the last Nazis to face a courtroom. Delivering the verdict, Judge Franz Kompisch said Gronin had willingly taken a safe desk job in a system that was inhuman and all but unbearable for the human psyche. One of the survivors ever called said she forgave groaning and tweeted a picture of herself shaking his hand. The leader of the Afghan Taliban, Mullah Mohammed Umar, has backed peace deal with the Afghan government in a statement released to the media. A message marking the festival of Eid al-Fitri made no direct reference to the talks but said Islam did not bar peaceful interaction with enemies. Afghan government officials last week met Taliban representatives in negotiations brokered by Pakistan. Pakistan last week hosted the first formal face-to-face -face negotiations between Taliban representatives and the Afghan government. 
The statement by Mullah Omar and speculation that the reclusive Taliban leader had not authorized the last talks. And now to South Africa, where Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu has been admitted to a Cape Town hospital on Tuesday for treatment to a persistent infection. The daughter, who is also a reverend, Canon Tutu, said the family hoped he will be able to return home in a day or two. But while Desmond Tutu and his wife Leah, in celebration of their 60th wedding anniversary a few days ago, stood before the congregation at the Holy Cross Anglican Church in Orlando West, Soweto, at a ceremony conducted by their daughter, Canon Tutu, to renew their marriage vows. Worshippers giggled as she led her parents in the reaffirmation of their vows, first asking her father, Dad, do you acknowledge Mom as your wedded wife? Tutu replied, I do. After asking her mother the same question, the couple read their vows. When it was all done, one of the country's favorite couples sealed their renewed vows with a kiss. And when photographers asked them to kiss some more, Leah, who's 88 years old, said, We've been kissing for 60 years, people, and you still want us to do it again? An electronic device has been found by investigators near a petrochemical plant in southern France where two tanks caught fire after explosions on Tuesday. According to reports, a malicious act was already suspected by authorities before the two tanks were 500 meters apart. A police sources told Fresh Media that they were analyzing an electronic device that could start a fire. Interior Minister Bernard Sazenu was said to have responded to the fires by warning regional officials to step up security at sensitive sites across France. Anti-terror officials in Paris were keeping a close eye on the investigation a week after explosives and detonators were stolen from a military site at Miramas, little more than 20 kilometers away. No one was hurt and firefighters dealt with a patrol fire quickly but took hours on Tuesday to bring the naphtha tank blaze under control. And now to business. Vice Chairman of the NCC, Yulin Jua, confiscates truckloads of unregistered SIM cards. Deli Ogbodu in Abuja, the Executive Chairman of the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, Yulin Joa, on Tuesday, said the commission would henceforth find any telecommunication operator the sum of 10 million naira for publishing advertisements or promotion without getting the necessary approvals from the Commission. This would become part of NSCC's regulations and guidelines for all telecom operators. He said the draft enforcement regulation was an amendment of the previous regulations issued to the industry in 2005. The management of Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, yesterday said the nation has achieved a new electricity transmission peak of 4,545 megawatts through its national network. In a statement endorsed by its general manager, Public Affairs, Shimola Gunju, the feat was achieved at 21.45 hours two days ago. The previous power transmission peak of 4,517 megawatts was attained on December 23, 2012. TCN management informed the general public that electricity willing to the distribution company's discos has improved to over 4,000 megawatts due to improvement in full supply to the power generation plants. And now to sports. Former Nigeria international Sunday Olise has signed a three-year contract with the Nigeria Football Federation as new head of coach of the Super Eagles. Speaking at his former presentation at the Abuja National Stadium, Olise assured sporting fans that he will work to restore the team to the peak of African and global football. The former midfielder, who is also a FIFA instructor, has a contract that is subject to a one-year renewal based on performance. Basi Ae, also reports that the NFF has paid Olise three months' salary in advance. Hey. 
Smiles all round as NFF and ex-international Sonde Olise seal the deal, which makes him the new Super Eagles handler. This is coming barely two months after the formal presentation of former coach Stephen Keshi, who was sacked last month. Now the Federation has given assurance that all mistakes of the past have been corrected. They say the new coach has a lot of experience, both on and off the field of play, that will serve the team well. As a member of the FIFA Technical Study Group, which I know, you travel from the length and breadth of the world, acquiring knowledge, giving up knowledge, coaching coaches, teaching teachers, training trainees, training trainers, and today is experience of the field, is experience on the field, technology. Because talking to Lise in London last week, I just noticed I was talking to an Asavenga. I noticed I was talking to a Pep Guardiola. But the new man in charge of the Eagles insists that he cannot perform any miracles, but will put in his best for the positive growth of the team. After presenting his technical team, he goes on to set a standard for any prospective Super Eagles player. The players that we are going to bring into this team, we have certain criteria that we have set out for players to play in the Super Eagles from now on. One of them is this. If you are not playing in the first division in Nigeria, in any credible league in the world, you are not playing Super Eagles. There is only one exception to that rule, and that exception is if you are coming up from the age grades of Nigerian football. That's if you are an under 23 player, under 20, or under 17, and we know that you can serve us, that is where the exception is bent. That is where the rule is bent. That is what we are going to do. He further states that team discipline will be upheld be at all times. If you play for Nigeria as a player, it's good. You're serving Nigeria, but it improves your market value. So the point I'm stressing out is that just as it is good for us to play, the players coming have to, be, have to realize that it is also good for them to play for Nigeria. So if you do Shakara for us, no verse, the door will be closed. Following the dwindling fortunes of the Super Eagles in recent times and the instability within the technical crew, sports analysts are of the view that the Olympic gold medalist may just be the man to return Nigeria to its glory days in football. Basia Ye, Core TV News, Abuja. Frank Lampard and Steven Gerrard's selection for Major League Soccer's All-Star game against Tottenham has been given short shrift by rank and file players throughout the league. Gerard and Lampard were both named to the All-Star squad despite neither having yet kicked a ball in league competition for the respective clubs, the Los Angeles Galaxy and New York City Football Club. But the selection of the former England stars as two commissioners peaks by MLS chief Don Garber, Garber due a withering response from several players on social media. And a host of new Liverpool signings got their first chance to play in team colours under Torrentia Bangkok Skies on Tuesday as the Reds comfortably defeated uh, the Thai All-Stars 4-0 in the friendly. The English Premier League side were visiting the Thai capital for the first stop on an end-of-season tour that will also uh, take them to Malaysia and Australia. Adam Bodgan, Joe Gomez and Danny Ings all made their debut appearances in the first half of the imposing Rajamagala Stadium. Success came within three minutes. A clever pass from Joel Callas uh, found Lazar Makovic, who easily took the ball around the keeper and slotted it home. Shortly before halftime, it was two as Texera Kona found Mamadou Shako, who flicked the ball into the far corner with a thumping header. The Brazilian joined the Reds from Hoffenheim and is the first man to wear this shirt since Osama Asaidi, while fellow summer signers also have their numbers confirmed. Liverpool have announced their squad numbers for the coming season with new boy Roberto Firmino under the number 11 shirt. 
The middle joined the Reds for a fee in the region of 28 million and follows in the footsteps of other notable number 11, such as Vladimir Sima, Yossi Benayon, and Jamie Reknab. Nathaniel Cycling takes the number two shirt vacated by Glenn Johnson, while Joe Gomez will wear the number 12 shirt last used by Victor Moses and goalkeeper Adam Bodkin takes Martin Kelly's former shirt number 34. To some guff stories for a setting famed for its subtleties and nuances, the old cars at St. Andrews paradoxically produces champions who are bludgeoned their way to the claret jug. The last four winners at the venue have been among the longest heaters in the game. No one propelled the game further than John Daly when he won in 1995. In 2000, Tiger Woods averaged 319 yards off the tee as a stroll to an eight-shot victory, while five years later he was repeatedly smashing it 340 yards en route to the five-stroke triumph. South Africa's Luis Osusen was no slouch in his win by seven shots in 2010. He was fourth in the driving starts. This trend is a reflection of the modern game played with equipment which strips golf of its guile of past days. At the old course, provided you avoid treacherous bunkers, you can bet it long and prosper. And once the hard core ball came into effect, the game changed almost like never before, observed former PGA Tour PRO branded Chambell, said Andrews, and of course a golf course highly prejudiced to par. To Encore TV primetime news tonight, another look at the top star. President Mohamed Buhari again urges leaders of the All Progressives Congress to shift their sides. And the People's Democratic Party has accused the Director General of the Department of State Security Services, Lawal Daura, of interference in the election petition cases. Nigerian Football Federation has unveiled Sunday Ulisse as the new Super Eagles coach. And that's it on the news tonight. On behalf of everyone here, thank you for watching. I am Nifemi. All good to you.